Okay, supplied air breathing apparatus or SABA system. Um, doesn't matter what type of system it is, there's usually an input and a discharge. Does that make sense? Usually air only travels through it one direction. Okay, there's only a couple ways to get the air out of the system. Hopefully it's the good way, through your discharges or through your low air alarm or through the pigtail for filling bottles or charging the second system. Okay, so when you walk up to something like this, you're going to have your inputs. All it takes to charge this system is one bottle. Okay, hook up one of these bottles, turn it on, and your system's charged and ready to go. There's only a couple rules, and most systems will have a couple rules, and what dictates those rules is usually what the low pressure alarm sets at. You've got to be above that. On this system, the low pressure alarm sets at 500 PSI, so we made a minimum of 1,000 PSI to charge this system. Almost every bottle's got at least 1,000 PSI in it, right? Okay, so go ahead and turn one of those bottles on. Got system will charge. Is it above 1,000 PSI? Yep. The other rule we have on this system, or almost any other system, is a minimum working pressure for the discharges. On this one, it is right here, 80 PSI. 80. See where it's written? So, I have one bottle charge the system. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up a second bottle as a backup. There's one other port I can use to charge this system. On our rescue, we have a 100 foot pigtail and I got a cascade system on the rescue. So if I can park it close enough and I can get that pigtail, it can go right here into this middle port and both of these bottles will become backup. One rule about this is I want you to only use one input because it'll always take the highest pressure. So if both of these bottles are on and they're both at 4,500, it'll drop one and then it'll drop the other. We'll drop one, we'll drop the other. We'll drop one, we'll drop one. That means this system, both these bottles would die at the same time. So that's why we only use one bottle, we have a backup. When the low air alarm goes off, we turn the other bottle on, turn this one off, open the bleeder valve, and change the bottle up. Okay, make sense? Pretty simple. In order to charge the second system, this pigtail is gonna go right in the middle. Go ahead and hook that up for me, class. And our same rules apply. 1,000 PSI minimum to charge the system, and 80 PSI working pressure. So go ahead and charge this system. Lower alarm sets. It's got at least a 1,000 coming in. I can go ahead and back this system up if I wanted to with another set of bottles. Make sense? In case this one, something would happen to it, I'll have this one all charged up, ready to go. That gives me eight working ports. We needed more than four. Because if you have a rescue team, what do you need? If you got a rescue team in, what do you need? A rescue team out. And what else might you need a line for? Patient. Victim. So if you're gonna take that guy's supply line, off your supplied air system, I needed another port. So now I have eight ports. You can set this system up any way you want. If you want two rescuers, your two backup rescuers, and your victim over here, that's cool. If you want your two rescuers and your victim and your two backups over here, doesn't matter. Both systems are charged, okay? The only re the reason this one is charged is to give us the eight ports. Now, if I decide that I'm gonna have my two rescuers here and they find a manhole further up, and you have another entry, this can become its own entity. All it takes is two bottles, one to run the system, one to back up the system. So these could be in two separate places. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, air travels in, air travels out through the low air alarm pressure, through the ports, or through the pigtail. If you lose pressure anywhere else, you've got a problem. Make sense? Questions about the SABA system? 1,000 PSI uh, input and at least 80 working. And the difference in the PSIs on the working pressure is <laughs> sucking on the mask. If it's at 80, you might have to really draw depending on how many people are on that system. If you set it at 100 to 120, it usually gets a little easier to breathe. Weather may pay a, play a factor 
and to how hard your system is to breathe because you guys know everything starts to freeze up and get cold and air doesn't travel as well. If you watch your gauge as they're breathing, this needle will bounce. They'll draw on it and it'll recover. They'll draw on it and recover. If they draw on it and it keeps dropping, you've got some type of problem somewhere. You've got no air going through your system. What do you got to do? Open a bottle. 